everybody, JC Peretz here, founder of allstarcharts.com, and I am joined today by Ann Harris, Director of Success for Magnify. How are you, Ann? Great, thanks for having me, JC. Listen, this is great because I wanna pick your brain because we have this cool new tool that we get to use. It's like a search engine for investing is how I look at it. It's like a the Google for investing. So I'm fascinated by the whole thing. I wanted to bring you on here to answer my questions and sort of show off how you know, readers of All Star Charts can use Magnify, how I personally should be using Magnify. And, you know, when we get a lot of questions from our readers, uh, I have better answers than I do now. So that's really what this is about. What do you think? Perfect. That was a perfect description. Uh, we have a natural language search for investment products. We want you to be able to find investment products the same way you would search for something on Google or on Amazon. Um, easy way for you to find investments. Um, searching for whatever you're interested in. You can search thematically or you can search based on, you know, specific asset allocation, really anything you want. So, okay. So let's say this is your first time using Magnify, right? It's like, okay, where okay. do I start? What's the first thing that we should do? Sure. I, I, sometimes I just think of things that are in the news, like energy has been in the news recently. I could just use the search bar and say something like invest in energy. But really, whatever you can think of, if you have a specific interest, um, maybe you're interested in nanotechnology, uh, maybe you're interested in robotics, easy way to find investments around that interest. Or if you're a more seasoned investor, you're looking at things like sharp ratio, tracking error. We pull in data from Morningstar, from FactSet, and from the underlying holdings, their government filings. So pulling in tons of data that you can use to sift through these investments and find the one that's a fit for your portfolio. I love this. Okay, fine. So let's say I want to invest in, you know, green metals. Okay, okay. so I put in that I want to invest in green metals and 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 then what? So, okay, sure. so a bunch of stuff comes up. Yep, so we're going to see a ton of different options and what we're going to see are a mix of ETFs, mutual funds and stocks and closed in funds as well. And you can actually narrow that universe. So once you get the results, you'll see um, ETS, mutual funds, closed in fund stocks. You can turn any of these on or off to narrow that universe down to the investment product that you want. Um, and then from there, you can compare them. So we have a really cool compare tool. Um, so just click that button, compare. Uh, the funds, ETF stocks will jump into your compare tool. And then you can compare those on return, risk, and fee. And whatever's more important to you as an investor, you can just kind of slide these tiles around and you'll get a confidence score of which product is better for you. Um, so say you're a fee conscious investor, you could just grab fees, move it to the top, and then we're gonna re-rank that for you um, and show you what the best result is based on your priorities. Very, very cool. Um, now, what about from uh, how it decides what should be near the top of the results or otherwise? Sure. So like yeah. I personally looked up copper mm -hmm. and I saw that Freeport McMoran was actually the first one up mm -hmm. ahead of the copper ETF. And right. I, while well, I agreed with that for my own personal reasons, uh, I was curious to see how you guys came to that conclusion as well. Sure. Yeah. So it's going to depend on whatever the searches that you put into the search bar. Um, what I actually really like to use to demonstrate this is say I put in uh, mid cap funds. And sorry for my slow typing. All right, here we go. Um, what we're going to see here is we're actually pulling in data on the underlying holdings of the fund. So sometimes you're going to see a fund that has the title of small cap, but we're actually going in and looking at that underlying allocation. We're pulling in that allocation data through Morningstar. Um, so we can see actually this multi-factor small cap fund is 97% allocated to mid cap. Um, so you're kind of getting more clear results than you might just by going by the fund name alone. And then in terms of the results, the more you add to the search, kind of the more you dilute each of the individual search criteria. So we could say something like mid cap funds with high returns um, and maybe something like low risk. And once I put in those three criteria, it's gonna uh, parse the search based on three elements now instead of one. So you're gonna see a different mix of, uh, of results in the search. And Very cool. Risk. So I mean, these, these seem out. like a great tools for financial advisors, you Definitely. know, ways that mm -hmm. they can get exposure to certain areas because, you know, when you invest in the S&P 500, you're getting a lot of growth, you're getting a lot mm -hmm. of technology, you're getting almost no energy, you're getting almost no materials. So right. financial advisors and just investors in general, we need to be a little bit more creative with how we get exposure to some of these areas because a lot of these funds just don't give us that exposure. 
Uh, I totally agree with you. And that's another thing I love about the search bar is you can include or exclude anything in the search as well. So I love doing like an exclusive search. So say you are already invested in Apple or Tesla, but you want to get additional technology investment. We could search for something like technology funds, no Tesla, and it'll exclude those results for us. Wow, that's great. And then you mentioned something in a, another conversation you and I were having mm -hmm. uh, about like an energy X Russia or something yes, like exactly. that, considering, mm -hmm. you know, what's been taking place in the first quarter of 2022 as we're recording this. Um, so something like that, I think, could make a lot of sense too. X out certain countries, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you can X out certain geographic regions or countries as a whole. Um, any result you'll see, you can always see what regions and countries it's invested in. You'll see this drop down menu here with all of your um, everything your search is searching on. So allocation to Tesla, allocation to technology. And then I could also go down and look at regions. And this is going to populate for all of your search results here. And where you're first going to see is developed markets um, and emerging markets. And if I click in, it'll break that down for me. So now I'm seeing of those developed markets, uh, what is the country allocation within that fund? So if you want to include or exclude certain exposures, just include that in your search. And if you want to see what they are, just use that drop down menu and look at the actual regions, countries it's invested in. It's fascinating. I'm so fascinated by all this. All this is fantastic. Yeah. How do you use it personally? Personally, for me, um, I'm always interested in kind of newer cutting edge funds for just kind of my fun investments that I do. So I love looking at things like um, funds in the robotics sector. Um, I know, and usually bots comes up, but I'll get things like that. Or another thing I like to do is say there's something I want to invest in that's kind of an emerging technology and there's a company that I'm interested in, but I don't want to just own that company. I want more diversification. I'll say funds that hold and I'll type in that specific ticker and then I'll see all the funds that are holding that ticker. And then I can, you know, be invested in that company, but also have some diversification, a little less risk as well. Very cool. What about, uh, what about some of the more interesting ways that you've seen other people using the platform? Sure. Um, one thing that um, specifically advisors like, and maybe some of your cl um, clients might like as well, is using this for tax loss harvesting. Um, so you could do a similarity search. So I could say something like similar to, I'll say um, XLE maybe. And this way we're going to see overlap of the funds and you'll find something um, that if you're trying to do tax loss harvesting, get out of your current position and get into this new position super easily. So I've seen tons of advisors using that, um, not as much on the retail side, but definitely applications there as well. Cool. So what now else? we're seeing more. <laughs> yeah, sure. So yeah, so this is all we're seeing similarity with XLE. So we're seeing XLE here first, and then we're seeing these next funds coming up um, that have, you know, 92% uh, holdings overlap with XLE. And we'll see that keep going down and down. It's huge. What yeah. a huge advantage. Sure. Um, another one that I like is high tracking errors. So I'm looking for something that's trying to get away from the benchmark. So I might do a search like technology funds with high returns and high tracking errors. So I'm seeing something that's not just following the benchmark. Yeah. You know, for me, I'm a data guy and I think mm -hmm. you get that for me. We're data visualization, uh, crew over here, uh, mostly price data, but we do a lot of sentiment work. Uh, okay. so, you know, for me, you know, ultimately, as you guys continue to build out, I know we've had these conversations before, you know, we can work with different data, figure out, see spikes in specific searches or trends in searches. You know, this is all stuff that will derive from this, these initial uh, queries, right? So, I mean, I look exactly. forward to just being able to dive into this data in the future. It's going to be sick. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, just taking those search results and seeing what we can do with them because um, we're keeping track of those. You'll see on the homepage popular searches in the past week. So you can see what people have been searching for um, and you can really search for anything. I was talking to one of our engineers the other day, just asking him about new interesting searches I might not, th might not have thought of. And he said you could search for anything, even like funds that do well in the summer. So I can go and look at funds that have historically done well during the summertime period um, and maybe get into those before, you know, uh, Q2 starts and then see how they perform over the course of the summer. So a seasonality layer mm -hmm. to the whole yeah. search, which is fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, I think you got something here. And this is <laughs> serious. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for this. Um, yeah. I mean, there's thousands of investment products out there and no easy way to search through them and compare them. So um, I think we're bringing something new and fun to the market. And I think uh, so far it's really resonating with people. So for right now, it's still U.S. focused, right? 
Um, yeah. So right now only U.S. citizens can open accounts. Hopefully one day in the future we'll be able to expand that. But yeah, right now open for U.S. citizens. Uh, but anybody can use the search. Tool. Anybody can use the search tool. Yeah. But to open an account and actually invest through the platform. Yeah. We have to be a U.S. citizen. I, I absolutely love this. I, there's the uh, there's some advantages to opening uh, the account and, and setting everything up through All Star Charge. So make sure to email us info at allstarcharts.com for any questions at all. And and uh, if, if people have questions, they want to reach out to Magnify directly. Yes. Should they contact you or is there a yes. portal? Yep. Um, you can email me at support at magnify.com and we'll get back to you. Same business day. Um, yeah. So reach out, please. Magnify with an I, right? Magnify with an I, M-A-G-N-I-F-I. Listen, all cool tech companies need to confuse people with exactly. the spelling. Otherwise, yeah. you're not a cool tech company, right? Isn't definitely. That cool? It's definitely a rule, yes. All right. Thanks <laughs> for being here, Ann. Thanks, Tracy. Great to talk to you. All right. Adios. Adios.